Hey everybody, this is Bob Kovacs here with another Wirefly cell phone smackdown. Today we have two of the most interesting phones available at this point in this year. On the left is the Samsung Epic 4G Touch. This is the version of Samsung's Galaxy S2 series of phones that runs on Sprint's 4G WiMAX network. So again, this is the Samsung Epic 4G Touch. It runs on Sprint. It is a 4G phone, as you can see by the 4G symbol up there. On the right is the brand new Apple iPhone 4S. Now this is the Sprint version of the Apple iPhone 4S. You can see Sprint right there. So this is a 3G phone. We've got a 3G phone versus a 4G phone. So that's a little not fair and we're going to talk about that a little later on as well. But uh, this is the brand new Apple iPhone 4. Both of these phones are dual core processors. Both of them have one gigabyte of RAM that serves the processor so that uh, that helps the, the processors run more quickly. Both of these have 16 gigabytes of storage built in. Now of course the iPhone comes in a variety of storage configurations. This is the 16 gig storage. There's also a 32 gig storage and a 64 gig storage. As far as the Epic 4G Touch is concerned, it only has 16 gig of built-in storage, but the Epic 4G Touch has a micro SD memory expansion slot. So you can stick in a, a micro SD memory card and put more memory in your uh, Epic 4G Touch. The memory cards that you can load in this are as big as 32 gigabytes. So 16 plus 32 gives you a maximum storage space of 48 gig on the Epic 4G Touch. On the Apple iPhone 4S, you have a 16 gig version, which is what this is, a 32 gig version, and a 64 gig version. Of course, the 64 gig version will give you more storage, far more storage than you'll get on the Epic 4G Touch. But let's come back to this for just a second. This phone is not discounted at all. If you're going to buy it, you've got to pay the full retail shot. You might be able to get it for a couple bucks less at Walmart, but that's about it, just a couple bucks. And so the uh, 16 gig version costs $200. The Epic, uh, for, yeah, Epic 4G Touch, excuse me, um, is available here on Wirefly, discounted for $150. $150 for 16 gig of storage, $200 for 16 gig of storage. Now, if you want to go up to 32 gig of storage for the iPhone 4S, that's going to cost you $300, $300. Over here, you've got the 16 gig for 150. Heck, you can go out and buy a 16 gig micro SD card for less than $50. Let's say you buy an expensive one and it's 50 bucks. So that gives you a uh, 32 gig Epic 4G Touch for $200 versus 300 for the iPhone. So the very first round in the Wirefly cell phone smackdown is the cost round. Which of these two phones costs less? And that round goes to the Epic 4G Touch. Now, I, I talked about many of the things these have in common. Look at what they don't have in common. Look at the display sizes. The Epic 4G Touch has a 4.5 inch diagonal display, and this is a Super AMOLED Plus display. AMOLED stands for Active Matrix Organic Light Emitting Diode. This has a resolution of 480 by 800 pixels. Of course, the uh, Apple iPhone 4S has Apple's famous Retina display. This is a 3.5 inch diagonal display with the outstanding resolution of 640 by 960 pixels. It is a very sharp display. Now, you might think that because the uh, Epic 4G Touch has a lower resolution display and it has it in a bigger, actual bigger size, that it would look fuzzier. It doesn't look at all fuzzy. It's crystal clear and sharp. Uh, I've used both these phones and frankly, now this is just me, everybody's going to feel differently about this, but I really like the bigger display. I like the AMOLED technology, which has uh, a much more color and uh, even better contrast than you get over here on the IPS. That's uh, something like interplane switching technology that the iPhone 4S uses. So uh, this is a very good display. I'm not taking anything away from the iPhone 4S's display, which is the same display that was in the iPhone 4. The Retina display is a beautiful, beautiful display. And a lot of this comes down to, do you want a really big display or do you want a smaller display? 
Personally, I like the big display. I also like the AMOLED technology, which is easily viewed from off axis. So when you have a phone this big, you can show somebody on either side of you a video. Three of you could watch a video together uh, on this relatively big screen and the viewing angles stay pretty good all around. The viewing angles are generally okay with the iPhone 4S, but they do fall off somewhat as you get off axis. Notice that when you're right on axis with my camera, and that's really the wrong way to do it, and you get a little off axis and it's, it, uh, there's a point where it darkens pretty quickly, right in there. So uh, it does fall off axis more than the AMOLED display does. The AMOLED display is almost like holding up a sheet of paper. And uh, that's kind of the difference between the technology there. Okay, so we uh, talked about the displays, very important. Uh, of course, the Apple iPhone 4 uses a proprietary Apple connector. I say it's proprietary, but it's available anywhere. You could buy it in Kmart and so forth. But it is unique to Apple. The uh, Samsung uses, uh, this the Samsung Epic 4G Touch, uses the same micro USB connector that all uh, Android phones use. And, and in fact, many non-smartphones use nowadays. Um, the phone I had before my Android phone used the exact same connector. In fact, I could use that power supply to power the uh, Samsung Epic 4G Touch. So uh, the um, Epic 4G Touch uses a more standard connector than the Apple iPhone 4 uses. Uh, that's really a minor point, but uh, it is a point to be made. Now on the back, both of these have 8 megapixel still image cameras. Both of these can take video at 1080p HD video. Now I didn't want to take an extensive battery of photos with both of these phones, but I did want to take one each. Uh, and I uh, have a photo to compare that I took on the Epic 4G Touch. Here it is. That's Luis on the left and Shelly on the right. And you can see what it looks like. Their faces are a little soft. It didn't quite focus well on their faces. And here's the photo taken with the Apple iPhone 4S. It's a little darker. Uh, they stood about the same distance away. I used the flash in both cases. I don't know, the, the focus is sharper on their faces with the iPhone 4S. I'd say this is maybe a draw, a, a little hard to say. Maybe the sharpness of the Apple is, uh, is nicer, but the uh, brightness of the Samsung is nicer. I don't know, let's call it a draw. Uh, both can take good snapshots in the right condition. Neither will take snapshots that is, are as good as even an average compact camera. So. If getting great pictures is your goal, you better carry your phone with a small compact camera and use that to get photos because that will give you a better, uh, better uh, photo idea. Now, I didn't take any videos with these, so uh, we can't really compare videos, but uh, they both take you know, reasonably good videos for a cell phone. Okay, now I've loaded some uh, apps on both of these. Let's go over a page here, and I'm going to play around with a few different things, including speed test and uh, Angry Birds. And there's also a, uh, um, an app called Linpack, which is a benchmark app that I'm going to be running on both of these phones. So let's first go ahead and take a look at the speed test. Now, I don't get 4G reception down in the studio, but I do get it on my desk upstairs, literally one floor above where I am right now. So I did a internet speed test using the speed test app that uh, I can load on both phones. As far as I know, this is the same speed test app. Of course, one is for Android and one is for Apple. Uh, and let's go ahead and run that video right now. I've got both the phones on my desk. I have them on my desk because I get 4G on the Epic 4G Touch at my desk. And uh, of course, the iPhone 4S doesn't have 4G, it just has 3G. I've put the same uh, speed test app on both of the phones. It's simply called Speed Test and it's available for both Android and Apple. So I'm going to go ahead and run the test on both of these. Let's get to the test. Here we go. I'm going to start the test. And now um, uh, this is, uh, of course, tests both the download and the upload speeds. We have 4G over here and 3G over here, so let's go. Oop, gonna have to select 3G over there. Now this finished the download speed over here for the Android phone. It's got 12,000 kilobits per second. In other words, 12.5 megabits 
per second download speed. Now it's testing the upload speed. Over here on the Apple 4S, it is still testing the download speed. It's uh, 440 or so. We're all done over here on the Epic 4G Touch. And we're uh, roughly 85% done with the download portion of the speed test on the iPhone 4S. So the download speed on the iPhone 4S ended up at uh, 400, 403 kilobits. That's 0.4 megabits. So over here we had 12.5 megabits. This ended up at 0.4 megabits. And it's still testing the upload speed. The upload speed is pretty miserable. Of course, that can vary on the time of day and how busy that particular tower is and the status of the network. Okay, finished. And there are the results. We got download speed of 403K over here. We got download speed of 12,500K over here. Much, much higher, of course. Uh, the upload speed was abysmal over here on the Apple iPhone 4S. Now it's obviously not going to be that way every time. I should say that both of these are on Sprint. Uh, so uh, it's both the Sprint network, but this is WiMAX 4G. This is CDMA 3G. So uh, there you go. The upload speed that we got over here on the uh, Epic 4G Touch is almost 900K and we got a uh, abysmal 13K over here. That's a terrible result. You'll probably never see that again, but that's what we got. Okay, while that video was running, and uh, that was really interesting, I felt a little bit bad for the Apple because uh, uh, clearly the Sprint download speed wasn't very good, and uh, so I'm comparing not optimum conditions for the Apple to optimum conditions for the uh, Epic 4G Touch. But that is what I got. I ran the test once. I didn't run it again and again to, to get the results I wanted. I ran it once and those were the results that I got. So it wasn't very good for the Apple iPhone 4S, but it points out that uh, with 4G on the Epic 4G Touch, when you are in range of 4G service, and, and we are here and many places I go, I had this phone with me in New York City this past weekend. It was 4G almost every place where I was. Um, when you're in a 4G area, the download speeds are astonishing. Heck, the upload speed on the Epic 4G Touch was faster than the download speed on the iPhone 4S. So uh, if you want rapid download speeds so that you can view videos faster, so that you can uh, get streaming videos from Netflix, uh, clearly you're going to want 4G speeds, which is available here on the Epic 4G Touch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run Angry Birds on both of these. It's two different versions of Angry Birds. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play a little bit so you can see what I got. I'm well into a game here on the Epic 4G Touch. Uh, and here on the iPhone 4S, I'm not doing so well. Here on the Epic 4G Touch, well, I'm not a genius at it there either. But uh, they, I, I guess I want to point out that they both make nice, fun gaming machines. And uh, if you're really you know, into spending a lot of time and, and wasting your hours, you can do that pretty nicely on both of these phones. Hey, I released some birds on the iPhone and, and got a score. Good for me. There we go. Okay, so that's what gaming looks like. Now, the uh, again, the Epic 4G Touch is such a big, bright, beautiful display that uh, it's uh, really a wonder. I gave it to a couple of kids and told them to play Angry Birds and I had to pry it out of their fingers about an hour later. So uh, let's just go back. So overall with gameplay with Angry Birds, I didn't play a lot of games obviously, just Angry Birds and just a, a, a little bit with that. I, I'd say they're both about even. It depends on whether, again, you want a bigger screen or a smaller screen. Uh, and the color rendition on the AMOLED display over here, and you're probably not getting the full uh, impact of that color rendition through the camera here, but the, the color rendition is just outstanding on the AMOLED display. It is not bad at all on the iPhone 4S. Uh, it's a very pretty display. I don't want to denigrate it in any way, but um, again, I think I prefer the larger, more colorful, and more contrasty display that you get over here with the AMOLED. Uh, but I can see where this has many, many followers. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and run LinPack 
Linpack is one of, really it's the only benchmark test application that I know that will run on both Android and Apple phones. Now, um, uh, when I came over here on the uh, Android phone, there was an about uh, tab that I could click on to get some information on it. And it said something about how it uses a dense 500 by 500 system of linear equations. Now when I opened the iPhone, the problem size was set to 200. I read 500 over here, so I thought, well gee, maybe I should change that to 500. So I changed it, the uh, default setting, I changed it from 200 to 500, and I changed the number of runs from 50 to 10. Uh, to get let it, uh, allow it to run in a reasonable time. So uh, that, that's the only thing that I did. And I don't know if I'm doing exactly the right thing, but it is the same app. It's available as a free app for both Android and for iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and run it on both of these phones, and we'll see what happens. Okay, over here, the uh, Epic 4G Touch has finished. It says the precision is an in, uh, inconsistent result. I don't know what that means. There's no uh, indication. There's no nothing I can read about it. Now, if I got online, I could probably read about it. But here's what we ended up with. The result it gives you is something called megaflops. That's a mega floating point operations per second. That's what megaflops stand for. Yes, it's actually a real unit of measurement that's used to measure computer speed. Megaflops is measure, uh, mega floating point operations per second. Over here on the Epic 4G Touch, we got 79.71, and we got about one more over here on the iPhone 4S. We got 80.79. And uh, there you go. So the, the um, Speed test here came out slightly higher, and it's a very slight difference uh, on the Apple iPhone 4S than we got on the Epic 4G Touch. And there you go. Uh, that's kind of how the Schmackdown lines up. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to talk about. Let's go back. And that is the weight of these two phones. Look at how much bigger the Samsung is than the iPhone 4. I mean, it's a lot bigger. The uh, Samsung is, however, quite slim. Notice how, and, and you're actually looking at the thick end of it right there. So if I swap ends, the, the Samsung, which is now on the right, is perhaps maybe, well, they probably just about exactly the same thickness. But when you heft them in your hands, the iPhone 4S actually feels heavier, and there's a real reason why it does. It actually does weigh more. This weighs 4.9 ounces versus 4.6 ounces for the Samsung Epic 4G Touch. This is, has a much bigger display, and it actually has a bigger battery internally than the iPhone 4S has, uh, but it actually weighs a little bit less. It weighs 0.3 ounces less than the iPhone 4S, and you can actually feel that. I like to carry a phone in my shirt pocket, and the less weight in my shirt pocket, the better. So this feels better to me in my shirt pocket. Its weight is spread out a little bit more, so it doesn't feel as concentrated or as dense as the iPhone 4. Uh, again, you know, that's me. A lot of people carry the phone in their purse or carry it you know, elsewhere in a back pocket or front pocket, whatever. Um, again, it just works better for me to have this less dense, less heavy object in my shirt pocket than the more dense, more heavy object. So I'm going to wrap this schmack down up. Uh, it, it really has been interesting to compare these two phones. Uh, I like the iPhone 4. I like the iPhone 4S. There's really, uh, you know, it really is a wonderful phone with a terrific operating system, very smooth to operate. Then again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Epic 4G Touch. It works very smoothly. It has a big, beautiful screen when you want to, uh, to watch a YouTube video or watch a streaming video from Netflix. And both these phones can do Netflix. You can see it right there. Uh, the, I would prefer a larger screen. I think most people would. But uh, hey, don't let me take away anything from the iPhone 4S because it actually is a pretty nice phone. So wrapping up this Wirefly cell phone smackdown, I have to pick a winner. And I think a winner by a small margin here is the Samsung Epic 4G Touch. Uh, what really puts it over the top is the 4G data speeds that you can't even come close to here with the Apple. Even if 
Sprint's network was working perfectly at my desk. The best speed I could hope to get would be perhaps 1.5 megabits. And over here, I'm getting nearly 10 times that. So, uh, and that speed will matter when it comes to downloading apps from the uh, Android market or from the App Store. It, that, that really does matter when you're looking at videos, when you're watching streaming video from Netflix. Uh, and so I think it makes the fun a lot more functional and a lot more fun. It puts the fun in functionality, in fact. And if you need to buy a phone, by the way, Wirefly would like to be your cell phone vendor. If you like these videos, if you think they're fun and informative, well, we think you should give Wirefly a try when it comes time to buy your next cell phone. So with that said, I'm Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly. Thanks for watching.